Now for all you major spoiler haters, I advise you, turn off the video now. Okay, and for all you super spoiler lovers, here's the ending right here. Of course, you face the Joker towards the end. He takes the cure and antidote, and obviously it contains the power of immortality from Az al Ghul, duh. And of course, takes Talia al Ghul hostage. Apparently, Batman's heart has gone out to her. No point there, considering she's a dead woman. And also you find that there's not one, but two Jokers. Wonder why, right? Oh shit, it's Clayface. Holy shit, that is awesome. So of course, that's your main boss fight with the Joker. But no fight with the Joker hands-on. Just a cutscene. So this series went from fighting a mutated Joker to fighting no Joker at the end. But I take it back though, you do actually fight the Joker hands-on, in regular form, but earlier on in the game. It's still pretty cool to watch him kick his ass. But now this brings us to the ending cutscene. The Joker actually dies from the disease. And for some reason, people say they feel remorse from this ending. You know, I'm starting to feel remorse too as well. Seriously, why would Batman feel remorse? Why is the mood here like like a tragic ending? I mean, seriously, the Joker's dead. It wasn't Batman's fault. Obviously, he's going to get the blame for killing him, but it wasn't his fault. He didn't really kill him. It's just like in Batman Begins. Hasn't anyone watched that movie? When he didn't really kill Ra's al Ghul, he said it himself. He just doesn't have to save him. Seriously, it's a villain. I mean, the city was in total chaos when Joker was in control. Seriously, now that he's dead, pretty much all hell is gone amongst Gotham, or Arkham, I should say. Seriously, there's not really much to say there. And of course, the end credits come up, but... Still, there's a lot to do if you haven't completed all the side missions with side villains and such. Yeah, there are a lot of side missions in this game, like saving civilians that are getting terrorized by street thugs, finding the Riddler trophies and doing the Riddler challenges, and then there's some really stupid ones which I know get weapon upgrades, but it involves flying through rings. Flying through rings? Hmm, this kind of reminds me of a superhero game that I've played before. The... Nope! Anyway. There's also a lot of the weapons are brought back from the previous game, which is awesome. And the good thing is, as soon as you get into the game, you don't pretty much have to get all of them like you did in the previous game. It's all there. Except for the line launcher. But, there's an upside to it. It has an upgrade allowing you to go in not one direction, but in another direction when you slow down. Isn't that awesome? And you even get some new ones as well, as you can guess. Like the smoke pellets, which help you escape when you're surrounded by a bunch of thugs with guns. The freeze blast, which can be used for not one, but two purposes. One, when you're trying to get past those annoying bursting pipes. Really, you can't get past them until you get this item. And number two reason is to throw it in the acid water into, yes, turn it into an ice raft. And this is where you can use the grappling hook to apparently move the ice raft. But this can get pretty challenging at a lot of points. You really gotta pay close attention and be aware of obstructions that can get in the way. The electric charger, which helps operate electric equipment, but mostly helps open electric doors. And hell, you can even use it on enemies too. Yeah, taser the shit out of them. Cool. And even some new cool moves are in there, like sliding under a door that's not all the way open. And as for the combat moves, yeah, most of them are pretty much there, plus a lot more. Of course, because you got new enemies in the game that you have to fight. There's ones carrying armor, in which you not only have to disorient them, but also, you can do a major punch attack. Damn, look at him, he's out of control. Freaking awesome. And then there's the enemies with the shields. You get on top of them, and BAM, that's freaking awesome. And the enemies with the knives, which takes a little bit of dodging, and then a little bit of punching. And now you got the returning enemies with the tasers, and of course the ones with the guns. 
I'm sure most of you are familiar with these moves. And also, you can do a double headbutt. Bam! That's gonna leave a mark. And also, the detective vision and the joker teeth make a return as well. But as for the gliding, well, a little bit of a different story. Because there are some new additions that have been added over the last game. I mean, yeah, it wouldn't be a Batman game without the gliding. Not only can you glide, you can also dive down, too. This can get a little tricky control-wise, but, but obviously you have to have a lot of height to get a lot of wind velocity, and of course you have to dive all the way straight down, and there you go, you can bounce right back up. Sweet. I have nothing against this move, I just suck at doing it. Enough said. Now, there are some downsides to this game. First thing that most people notice is, yeah, the boss fights are fairly easy. All you do most of the time is either use a weapon and or beat the shit out of them. And being that, yeah, it's very self-explanatory that you have this whole tutorial thing right up there. You have the option of turning it on or off right there, but yeah, it's a little too simple right there. But it's still cool watching Batman beat the shit out of people. I mean, that slow motion right there, can't stress far enough that it's bittersweet. Some of the dialogue is a little bit cliche too as well. But what do you expect? It's a bad game. You can expect a lot of it out of a lot of the villains and the cutscenes and the interactions that Batman has with a lot of these characters. He'll be somewhere cold. And also, it would have been kind of cool to drive the Batmobile or the Batpod around, being that you're in the city this time. But hey, I'm not going to go that far. So, in other words, yes. This game definitely lives up, or in some cases, exceeds the hype surrounding it, by all means. Just like the first game, it ain't afraid to put on the cape and say once again, I bet My final verdict? Say rockin' two e remotes, we motion pluses up. It's that good. being the successful part of the franchise? Would I say it's the best game of the year? Well, we'll find out when I cover Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And I have yet to review that one, so until next time, happy gaming. <laughs>